Hey guys, I'm here with another video about what I learned from the pros in the Summer Skirmish series. Uh, this is my second in the series, and uh, yeah, let's just hop right into the tips. Are waiting, and they're already in their one by ones. One no one wants there. to make a move until the zone has to force them out. When everyone has to move that way, no one's going to be focused on shooting. Everyone's running. Yeah. Versus going early, yeah, and then everyone, knew, knew, then they basically get lasered. Alright, so that was replay, and I wanted to show you guys how he used the window as kind of a mirror window for anybody who's played Rainbow Six. So right now, you can already use this kind of piece right here. As a as a mirror window peek where you can see where they are and then you can already have the pre-fire and aim ready. But he kinda took that to another level. While this is building, you can kinda see a lot better. And the pre-fire is already through this little piece here. You can use it all the way over there, and you can basically all the way mirror window peek. So that's pretty cool. He's a very good player, so Maybe if I, know how to build I would not be surprised if he if he comes top twenty. We actually have a replay coming in from Myth. Oh, Very nice drop down right there. Alright, so that was Myth, and I just wanted to show you guys the thing that he just did there to get down from a ramp. When uh, you usually are trying to jump off a ramp like this, you really don't know where to go, so you kind of have to build off. But what he did was kind of an extension of the floor, uh, and then wall, wall, floor, wall, wall, floor thing. He jumped off to the side of his ramp, placed a wall, and then placed a floor. And that basically gives you a starting point. It's always really hard when you jump off of a ramp and try to place a floor and nothing places because you can't place a floor until you move out. You gotta place a floor here and then you gotta place it out. And that tends to not always work. You might not get the angle when you jump off or it just doesn't show up for you so you end up dying. That happened a lot to me and now I have this new cool thing that Myth showed me to get down. down. Try to try to shoot those, replace them with your own. Now he can't place a pyramid. He put his floor there, or his ramp. Now the enemy can't place a pyramid. Oh, One less layer so they have to shoot through. Oh, oh there it is! Yes. Oh, what? Oh. All right, so Sass in this clip played really nice. There's two points I want to make. Um, the first is the stairs. Um, I don't think he intended to, and I know he didn't do it in this clip, but I saw an interesting opportunity um, with the stairs and using the, the jump trick where you move your body really fast. Um, he places these stairs outside of where his opponent is. His opponent's in this little uh, brick uh, one by one underneath him, and they get into a fight, and we'll watch it. They get into a fight, this guy edits through his roof, and right there, I'm thinking that Saf maybe could have used his stairs to do the boost and go out of the storm. Yeah, so the other point I wanted to make was about how not scared of the storm Saf is, and he just goes straight into it. It's doing 10, 10 damage a tick, but he knows that if he finishes the fight, uh, he'll win, and he realizes that this guy pushes out, so we'll watch the rest of the fight. And uh, yeah, he goes out of the storm, and the the other guy, Hezzy, he's shooting somewhere else. You know why? Because this storm is very difficult for him to see through. Um, and he, it's hard to track somebody when the storm is right in your face like that. Um, so that's a really smart play by Saf to use the storm to obscure him. Saf can actually see Hezzy very easily, whereas Hezzy can't see him on the other side. So if you're having a fight in the final circle, um, don't be afraid of going in the storm. It only does 10 damage a tick. The fights can be over within 10 seconds. 100% of the time. Alright, so I wanted to show you guys this from Hezzy's POV um, because I wanted to show you. You can't really see, this isn't from Hezzy's POV unfortunately because the Fortnite stream only showed um, somebody who was specking him. Uh, yeah, a skirmish admin too, you can see up in the top left corner. So just look at where he aims. He takes one shot, okay, then he aims over there on the right and he's not tracking him as best he could. Um, and that could have made the difference. I don't think it did in that specific situation. Up high, getting to a build off now again. Comes back to it. Do you really want to build up high in these late games when the circle is so small? Shotgun. Oh, beautiful play. That was the. All right, so I wanted to show that clip because that was Symphony, um, and it was kind of an extension of a thing that we normally always do, which I, I've seen people call it the T few peak and whatever, which is you jump, take a shot, and then place a floor. Um, in this situation, he actually jumps on top of the guy's back, take a shot, and then he places stairs here instead of a floor. Um, which was really cool to me because a normal floor, sure you can do whatever, but if you want to jump down or edit or whatever, you kind of have to do, you can't really edit backwards if he goes up towards your floor. And then you fall, even if you edit the other side, so. So the stairs is interesting because it gives you that other angle, and then also it gives you really easy access to jump back up. There's no um, timing or anything really. It's very simple to get back up here and then do even more editing. Um, um. I have one nade. I can break the build. Cut. 
Nice. Oh, oh. Let's go, baby. Wait, the one under us they were so no. calm there and so meticulous, and they really, really played that oh. great. Oh, another. All right, so that was Symphony and Excels again. Uh, this is a little teamwork trick that I noticed that they. Uh, it's very similar to the thing that we saw Bizzle and Hezzy do the the week in my last video. Um, and in this situation, he uses a grenade to blow up the build, and then they both shoot him down. So basically, he, there's a guy hiding behind this one by one or whatever. He throws a grenade, it blows up the wall, and they instantly start shooting him because the angle is now uh, given. So um, that's really cool. I like those little teamwork strats. I would assume so. I don't think he'd be wasting the, these mats early on if there wasn't. And it looks like there is one taken down. down. down instant. Oh, wow. Okay. So there's one. So that was one of the duos. So. It could easily change, though, very quickly. I would. All right, so that was C9 Chris, and I just wanted to point out, uh, I'm not sure how useful this is or whatever, but we saw how he tagged up the player, and then he instantly, as soon as he stopped tagging up the player, he threw clears, or he only threw one, but he realized that he knocked him at that point. But I think that's an in interesting way to compound uh, the damage you're able to do with an AR or anything else after somebody goes behind cover. Um, you might get lucky and do the clear trick where you damage the building or whatever. It just allows you to basically do a combo as if this was a fighting game where you do a lot of damage and then throw more clingers and try to end them. Um, so I thought that was interesting how he shot and then instantly turned and threw a clinger um, without really thinking or aiming where he was placing that clinger. Just kind of threw it on the instinct. You were to shoot from above. And this is a good spot for Tifu. Yeah, this definitely. Guy, oh man, you gotta wonder. Maybe is, is, should Tifu just out, like right? relax I and really got much I... options right now? Look at that. You hear him talking through his options, yeah. which it, are none. Yeah, and pretty low mats now, like 500, well, and then he has no healing as well, and he is low. Like I think it's 60 HP that he has. So he and he's he's playing it smart. You see, where he's oh. backing. Oh. oh. What? what? Oh, shit. All right, so I wanted to show you guys both parts of that Tfue clip. There was a lot of interesting things that he did in that sequence where he got the last kill that he needed to get fourth place. So the first thing that he did was, um, while using wood, he uh, peeks through, sets his aim, edits the window, and then shoots through. Um, and that just allows him, maybe not with a semi-auto sniper, but any other sniper to be able to get a quick, accurate shot um, without being in danger while taking the aim, okay? Um, it's still a little risky when you stand still in the middle of a window, but eventually, hopefully, he edits it back close or whatever. And the second part was once he, he just edited a window open and put a roof down, and this allows you to take cover right here. Now I'm fully covered through my window, um, but I can use all sorts of different angles off of the roof right here. I could use right here, I could use right here, I can even move over here, take more angles over there. It's not just the normal flat ground, so it's a little harder to hit your head. Um, and also it gives you just a tiny head peek right there. Um, I thought that was really cool. He used that to great effect to spam his drum and get that last kill that he needed to get fourth place, and this was really cool. Healing so. type of end game. Look oh, at this. this is on the opposite oh. end. Wait, Hogman kills Nin uh, eliminates Ninja. With it was just a one tap. I think he was already down when we swapped over to him. Okay, okay. Clinger's going out. All right, so in this clip, I just wanted to show you guys how um, this was something that the casters kind of missed. They picked up on it later, but um, Hogman actually picks up these clingers, drops his med kit and he uses them to try to put pressure on, um, I think it's reverse in this situation, he puts pressure on him by spamming the rest of his clingers, because he's not going to use them anyway, so he just picks them up, throws them randomly, um, and then picks his med kit back up, and I thought this was really dope, and it's probably something that you guys should pay attention to see if you have these opportunities, because, yeah, that clinger would just go to waste otherwise. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you'll be back for more, I'll be making more of these videos as the competitive scene uh, progresses, these skirmish series are awesome so far we're experimenting with a lot of different formats but once it gets a little bit more uh, solidified and stable i hope to put out a lot more videos for you guys and uh, yeah if you liked the video if you enjoyed the format if you have any criticism for me any feedback anything that you guys want to see anything you think i can improve leave it in the comments